All right, here we go. Here is part two of rapid and slow processes. I know you probably just watched the other video, but just going over it real quick. Remember, Earth's surface can change slowly and can change rapidly. Slow process takes a long time, tens of thousands of years, millions of years. Rapid process, these could be things that happen hundreds of years. Now, remember, uh, in the scope of the Earth's history, 100 years is not a long time. For us, it is. For the Earth, it isn't. So this could be something that happens um, a couple centuries. It could happen a couple months, weeks, days, or even in some uh, unique cases, moments, right? Seconds. I talked about in the last video about Alfred Wagner, how he proposed this idea years ago about tectonic plates. Um, hopefully you watched the BrainPod video. And this video, if you haven't yet, uh, we'll go into more detail about that. And we just went over that. Um, so this idea here, one of the things I want to focus on are volcanoes, right? And volcanoes are a great example of something that could take millions of years to form and then hours, if not just brief moments to destroy themselves, depending on the type of... <clears throat> volcano that it is. Now this video here that's being shown um, is going to cover this. This National Geographic is a great video to watch to cover volcanoes. So if you want to watch more about that, learn more about them, you will. Um, this is another thing that you will be focusing more on when you get into middle school um, science. What I think is interesting is that in one point in human history, there was no word for volcano. Um, and what we're going to be talking about and what happened with Pompeii, um, what happened with the city of Pompeii 1,941 years ago um, resulted in the word volcano being created. So let's just talk about this real quick. In literacy, you guys were talking about mythology with Mrs. Schneider and Mrs. Smith. And mythology is great um, storytelling that people, you know, would tell these myths thousands of years ago. And a lot of that was just their entertainment um, for the same reason that we have movies and comic books of Captain America and the Hulk and Spider-Man and everything. But another part of mythology was explaining the world around them. So when Mount Vesuvius erupted, and we're going to go into this more in just a little bit, and destroyed the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum, the people of Rome needed to make sense of why did this happen. And mythology is one of the ways that they did that. So mythology, in this case, they believed that this, this god Vulcan, right? So this fictional character, the god of blacksmith and fire and steel, was angry with them and that's why he had used this mountain or as they named it a volcano named after this god vulcan destroyed their city right destroyed one of their cities so vulcan was a god of blacksmiths and fire uh his in his storyline he made the armor for the gods so it made sense when they saw eruptions of fire and destruction that they would attach it to him so volcanoes the word we use now comes from the Greek god, the Roman god, Vulcan, um, in their way of making sense of things. So here are some types of volcanoes. Not all volcanoes are the same, and I'm just going to go over these real quick. Um, one is a cinder cone. Uh, the other one is composite volcano. The other is a shield volcano. And the other one is a lava dome. So I'm going to leave this up here, and I want you to write down those names for me real fast. If you need to pause it, pause it. Okay, the two that we're going to be, so just notice here we have these layers where they build up, uh, magma chamber coming up, the vent, when it comes up, that's when it's lava, it's still below ground, it's magma, right? Here you have some cooling lava, um, here you have some cooling lava, and here the, the, when it says viscous and fluid, fluid is going to be the lava that runs really fast, oh, sorry, it's really liquidy, viscous means it's really thick, almost like honey. Okay, here we have shield volcano, lava dome, the caldera. We talked about that. Uh, that's Yellowstone, if you remember that. The two volcanoes we're going to talk about today are composite volcanoes because when these erupt, these are the ones that cause the most damage. Um, 
And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So make sure you get those types written down. All right, here's that map of uh, the plates as we see them. And those red dots, remember, are major volcanoes that are around there. That ring of fire, we call that because it's almost a continuous ring of sorts of all volcanoes. The one volcano we're going to talk about, Mount Vesuvius, that erupted is over here in Italy, in Europe, by that plate boundary. Um, and then the other one we're going to be talking about briefly, Mount St. Helens, is over here in the United States. All right, so here is a picture of um, the ruins of Pompeii with Mount Vesuvius in the background. And this is a picture of what those ruins look like today. All right. So here is a picture of a much younger me when I had a chance to go there with my wife on vacation. Um, let's see. I think this was maybe about 10 or 11 years ago, I think. Uh, and I'm very excited to be there for many reasons, the history part of it, but then also the geology part of it. So here I drew this in. Um, in the back, those added lines that I drew in there was before Mount Vesuvius erupted, what we know about composite volcanoes is that they would have that nice triangle shape, like how we draw mountains and everything. And what we know with how much of the city of Pompeii was buried in sediment, that this volcano, when it erupted back in the year 79, think about this, this was, we're in the year 2020. If we go back in time enough, we would hit the year 79. This is when this happened. Um, and that is how much of the volcano erupted and was destroyed in this massive eruption. So here's, here's some details about Pompeii that is so amazing, not only from a geology point of it, but a history point of it. Um, you will learn a lot about the Roman Empire in middle school and high school, but the Roman Empire, uh, they were the dominating force of the world back when they were the dominating force of the world. Nobody could really stand up to the Roman Empire, but uh, many, many uh, things happened that led to the downfall of the Roman Empire. And basically, here's what happened. The Roman Empire made a lot of enemies, and when they became weak enough, those enemies came in and basically destroyed as much as they could of the Roman Empire. So why does that matter with Pompeii? So Pompeii was a Roman city that was about the size of Cincinnati. So think about the city of Cincinnati, about the size of that. That's how big Pompeii was. And because of this volcano erupting and covering Pompeii in ash and stone, it was completely buried. So when the Roman Empire fell, the enemies of Rome could not go through and destroy these Roman artifacts. So the city was destroyed, but in a strange way, it was also preserved. So these are these details that we only know about right now because this city was covered in volcanic ash and the enemies of Rome couldn't destroy all their details when Rome was crumbling as an empire. It's interesting. So for example, this column over here was really neat because a cheap way to make these columns, if you didn't have the money to uh, carve it out of stone, would to make this type of concrete and then carve the lines into it. So here you can see they were carving the lines in it. And then when the volcano erupted, it stopped their work. They couldn't, they couldn't finish the deal. They would have rooms in their homes that were covered in these beautiful paintings and beautiful tile work. And some of the homes would even have this tile work at their front entryway as a way of letting people visiting their home know that they had a dog. So this was a version of a beware of dog sign. So maybe for a guest visiting to let them know, hey, we have a dog. Or if someone was trying to break in, hey, we have a dog, so get out, right? Very neat. Here's another neat thing about Pompeii. Uh, when it was uncovered, they discovered these bakeries, these neighborhood bakeries. So if you think about your neighborhood and the restaurant you like to go eat at, this was a city that had neighborhoods and had restaurants. So this was a bakery where they would grind the, the oats and wheat for their bread and then bake it in the oven. This right here is an actual piece of bread that was left in the oven 
when the volcano is erupting, because when when a volcano is erupting and destroying your city, you're not going to be like, oh, wait, well, hold on, hold on real quick. I got to get the bread out of the oven. No, you, you got to get out of there fast. So when they uncovered these bakeries, they found carbonized bread that had been blackened by all this sediment and ash. So now because of this, we know what Roman bread looked like. And this right here is the stamp from the person who baked that bread. That was like basically putting a box of Marcella's donuts inside of a Marcella's donut box. So when people say, hey, these donuts are delicious, where did you get them? Oh, I got them from Holtman's. I got them from Marcella's. This was a Roman version of that. So this is what bread looked like in this city over a thousand years ago. In some extremely rare cases, they even found where when they were digging out the homes that there were eggs left in a bowl and somehow, miraculously, these eggs have not broken. They were just covered in ash and preserved for all this time. It's, it's amazing what happened with that. Here's another neat shot of this. So here is a, a picture of myself, and here's a picture of my wife going across a Roman street. And here's what's really cool. So I'm going to just have you pause this and think about this after I ask this question. If you look at these little white stones, why do you think those little white stones are in between those bigger ones? And why do you think these bigger stones are bumped up out of the street like that? This is a street, sidewalk, sidewalk. But why do you think they had those bumped up? And why do you think they had those white parts in there? And if you're in the room with somebody, talk to them about it. What do you think? So this is uh, igneous rock right here, that, which is a lot of you know, in that area because they're right by a volcano. So this would have been really durable. This is a metamorphic rock marble that is very shiny and sparkly in light. So this, this was their version, these little white stones tucked in between the cracks there. That was their version of us putting reflectors on the street so we know where the street is. So if you were a Roman living in Pompeii, and you were driving your wagon at night or walking down the street at night with a lantern because they had no electricity over a thousand years ago. These white rocks would reflect that light back to you and you could see where the street is. Now here, this is a great shot of my wife wearing sandals because back then sandals were all the either that or you're walking in your bare feet. And these raised rocks here are a crosswalk. You can go across the crosswalk here and not have to worry about getting your feet wet by walking in the wet street. And it showed you a safe place to walk and they were bumped up like this so the carriages could have their wheels go through um, and you could go across the street safely enough. So here's a, a neat and sad thing about Pompeii. Not only has Pompeii left behind artifacts of how the people lived, but it also left behind the remains of the people. Here's what happened. Um, so a lot of people unfortunately died from choking on volcanic ash or the poisonous gases coming out of the volcano and they fell to the ground and were buried by ash and rock. When the archaeologists rediscovered the city, now this is this is something that's crazy to think about. There is so much ash and sediment that fell and exploded out of this volcano that it covered the entire city. It just didn't destroy it. It covered the entire city. It was just gone, covered, buried. So when the archaeologists found where the city was again, they started noticing all these hollow spots. You know, you can tap on something and hear that it's hollow. So when they, they wanted to figure out what it was without destroying it, so they dug these tubes down into the hollow spot and filled it with plaster, like a, like a material that starts out as a liquid and when it dries, it turns into a solid, right? So plaster. And when they dug those out, they realized that those hollow spots were in the shape of people. So we have evidence of these Roman people from that time period. We can see the outline of their faces. We can see the outline of their clothing, their shoes, their jewelry. Uh, and then we can study their bones on the inside. So it's, uh, it's tragic for these people. Um, and, and now we have a way of learning about them and how they lived and what they looked like. It's, it's a fascinating thing about Pompeii. So here, here's a couple things about this. Um, there's a video here that I really, really want you to watch out of all the videos. 
this is the one I want you to watch here. It is called A Day in Pompeii. Um, this video is spot on of what it would have looked like. It would have started out as a normal day and then it ended in disaster. So they did this using the science we know, the geology we know, the history we know about these people. So this is a computer animation of what it would have looked like. This is as close as we can get to the real video of it, but this is not, this is computer animation of it. So what happened was, like I said, Rome was spread out all over the place. They had cities everywhere and people noticed what was going on. You are not going to miss a gigantic eruption like this. Now remember, they thought this was just a mountain. There was no word in the human vocabulary for a volcano until after this happened. So this picture here is of somebody called Pliny the Younger. Pliny the Younger is named that because he had a father whose name was Pliny the Elder. Pliny and his father noticed this eruption from across the sea. They lived on an island not too far away from the mainland of Italy. So when they saw this, they got in their boats and they wanted to get closer. Unfortunately for Pliny the Elder, his father, he got too close. And as the history goes, he died of, from the poisonous gases. But Pliny the Younger wrote in his journal about this eruption, and he described the smoke coming out of the volcano looking like an umbrella pine. Now you can see me, this is me sitting underneath this tree, and this is what some of the pine trees look like in Italy. They're really neat. They grow straight up, and then the branches shoot off in every direction. So because this man wrote in his journal that it looked like a pine tree. Now think about when you guys say something in class, like uh, some of you said like the rusty nail looked like hot sauce. That is a great description because I know what it looks like. So he described the, sn the smoke looking like this tree. And now we know about this eruption from that description of the violence of it, that it shot straight up and then just hundreds of tons of ash and smoke and soot and bits of rock and broken glass, uh, volcanic glass shot up and then just rained down on the city. So this is a great description of what this eruption would have looked like. And then that leads to a more modern day version. 40 years ago, Mount St. Helens, same type of uh, volcano is a composite volcano. It went from this to this in just one day. And it was just this violent, devastating eruption. Here's another shot, before, after. So this was surrounded by beautiful forests and they were just wiped out in one day. Um, so here are some great videos. Again, here's a um, just real quick, um, this is a video about Mount St. Helens. It goes into a lot of detail what happened. Here's a news report um, that when it loads up, it will be a news report from 40 years ago about what was going on with that. It was, it was really, really um, devastating. Here's a before, during, next, and next. And what made the eruption of Mount St. Helens so interesting was instead of it going up, it blew out sideways. People could see the side of the mountain, the volcano, like bulging outwards and then just blasting sideways and destroying everything around it. Here's a, take a look at that. Here's another one. So this word right here, pyroclastic flow, that is um, what happened in Mount St. Helens and Pompeii. And this is just this avalanche of boiling hot mud, rock, sand, volcanic glass that rushes down the side of the mountain at hundreds of miles an hour and just destroys everything in sight. So this is, this is it. Now, this sign did not survive. There's no way these trees would have been blown away, but the sign remained. But what this sign is marking is marking the coordinates on the map. So the people knew where this was located and using their maps and using their compasses and everything, no GPS back then, they were able to mark the same area again. So you can see this is what Mount St. Helens area looked like before 
and after. This is a very good example of a rapid change. And then that leaves us to a slow process, which is glaciers. And that is going to be tomorrow. All right. I hope you guys have a great day. Take it easy. Get outside and enjoy the weather. If it's nice, I hope it is. And I hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks.